Hello, a warm welcome to you from SGT University. I am Dr. Shorya Tandon from Faculty of Dental Sciences. Science and humanity have a deep connection and for the welfare of both of these, we need to move in the right direction. This right direction is called as ethics. Today, we are going to learn about ethics in the field of research in dentistry. Come, let's learn more about ethics in research. Today, I am going to take you on a journey to understand a component which is very important for understanding the deep connection of science and humanity. If any form of science has to be of maximum benefit to the society and also has to be in the positive spirit towards humanity, then we can say it has to be morally correct or in scientific terms it has to be ethical. In science, identification of a problem is the first step towards its remission or progress. This remission or progress can be achieved by the planned act of research in the field of dental, medical and allied health sciences. To identify or search for new facts is called research, but before embarking on any research activity, a dental investigator must be aware of research ethics. Ethics is a moral concept which has been considered worthy of major contemplation since the beginning of human life on earth. The word ethics is derived from Greek word ethos which means character. Since the direct outcome of the science of dentistry is seen in the patient care aspect of dentistry, ethics in dentistry has been more focused towards this aspect only. In actual practice, the professional nature of a dentist as well as the set of governing litigations like Consumer Protection Act have resulted in a more professionally ethical and scientifically organized act of dental service utilization in our country. The principles of dentistry before reaching this play field of dental practice needs to be tested and have been since ages. Since dentistry is a science of humans primarily, these tests need to be conducted on humans too, which is achieved by research for this ever-evolving science of healthcare. And to justify humanity, any research on humans needs to be ethical. We need to understand the various ethical principles which are required to be followed as done in dental practice too. Dental ethics is defined as the science of ideal human behavior in situations where distinction must be made between the right and the wrong, duty must be followed and good interpersonal relations maintained. The tenets of ethics are based on the ancient principles of non-malfeasance which means to do no harm, beneficence which means to do good, autonomy which means to respect subject's consent in undergoing research, justice which means to not discriminate a subject on ethnic, religious or caste groupings, some of the other principles which have evolved and added to this list over time are veracity which means to be truthful with the subject about research methodology and the anticipated problem in the outcome. Fidelity, which means to fulfill commitments and keep subjects personal information confidential. Compassion, which means tolerance and empathy. Competence, which means professionalism and research integrity. To mold and fashion dental ethics as an acceptable code of research and practice, it has taken several centuries. Many guidelines exist in today's scientific world which act as principles for resolution. These include having simple rules, to having endured several royal chapters and a number of parliamentary dental enactments. Malpractice and unethical practice are terms often interchanged and used in normal conversation. They both are applicable to research as well as dental practice. 
scientifically they have major differences as follows if we look at the difference of offense malpractice or willful negligence or absence of reasonable care and skill by the doctor resulting in an injury or death of the patient whereas in unethical practice violation of code of ethics or an infamous conduct is called as offense when we look at the point of damage to patient malpractice usually shows damage to patient when compared to unethical practice on the category of absence of care or skill again it is present in malpractice the punishment under malpractice could be a fine or an imprisonment whereas in unethical practice it could be warning or an erasure of name from the dentist register if we look at the authority dealing with these two situations the court deals with the malpractice cases whereas the state dental council could be dealing with the unethical practices in order to safeguard health of the patients various guidelines have been framed over the years in the past milestone events have led to laying down of guidelines by authorities so as to protect the moral rights of humans involved in research code of babylon is the oldest and contains laws related to medical practice egyptian code of medical ethics meted out punishments for malpractices in ancient india the code of conduct was specified by great sages and seers in their treaties called as the atreya anushasan charaka samhita and shushruta samhita the hippocrates oath sworn in by all dental graduates is a noble code of ethics in which the graduate or disciple is shown the dignity and responsibility of his calling and urged to make freely available any new discovery maintain professional secrecy and seek the benefit of patient above everything in 1948 nuremberg code became the first international declaration on research involving human subjects which made it compulsory to take voluntary consent or free choice of individuals to participate in a research study this set of guidelines was an outcome of war crimes committed by nazi doctors during the world war who forcibly conducted human experiments on prisoners for example they exposed the prisoners to freezing temperatures mustard gas malaria and poisons to see what effects were and possible treatments on these war prisoners the outcome of the nuremberg war trials was this nuremberg code in 1964 the world medical association along with world health organization developed an expanded code of ethics on research involving human subjects which was called as the declaration of helsinki that was subsequently revised in 1975 and known as the helsinki 2 Some of the key guidelines of this declaration which are to be followed in all types of epidemiological research especially experimental studies are as follows Research should follow scientific principles study design written as experimental protocol should be reviewed by the ethical review board health concern of human subjects should prevail over interests of society and science precaution should be taken to respect the privacy of the subject accuracy of results must be preserved each subject should be informed in detail about the study informed consent must be taken to participate in the study and subject should be free to withdraw from the study at any given time the belmont report published in 1979 was the culmination of several reports by national commission for the protection of human subjects of biomedical and behavioral research in united states of america three guiding principles were enriched in the belmont report which are respect beneficence and justice so basically all guidelines are intertwined in each other focusing on ethical principles towards research on human subjects in wake of these developments 
Indian Council of Medical Research, the apex body to regulate biomedical research in India, devised the ethical guidelines for conducting research on human subjects in the year 2000 and revised them further in 2017. These guidelines are in lines with the Helsinki 2 and are as follows. Essentiality, voluntariness, informed consent and community agreement, non-exploitation, privacy and confidentiality, precaution and risk minimization, professional competence, accountability and transparency, maximization of public interest and distributive justice, public domain and totality of responsibility. Compliance of all these principles is mandatory for any ethical research to be conducted. One of the most important principle to be followed in research is of consent. Come, let's understand it further. Consent is the most important and fundamental tool to respect a subject's right to accept or refuse participation in a research. Consent has been defined in the Indian Contract Act as a voluntary agreement, compliance or permission. Consent is insufficient if it is in implied or expressed form, that is, verbal or written communication to the subject without providing information necessary to make an informed or voluntary decision to participate. Hence, it must ideally be an informed consent. This means that information must be provided to the potential subject about the study's purpose, duration, experimental procedures, alternatives, risks and benefits. This information must be provided in a language that a lay person can understand or read to individuals who are illiterate. The subject has the right to ask questions and investigators must satisfy them before enrolling for their research work. There are four types of consent. Firstly, implied consent. This is the most common type of consent. It is mostly applied to dental practice and it is also called as tacit consent. Next is the expressed consent. This means that the terms of consent are stated in explicit language and taken for procedures beyond routine clinical examination. It may be written or oral, the latter obtained in presence of a disinterested third party. The third type of consent is called as the informed consent. This consent is based on information given by the researcher as well as voluntariness and capacity of the subject. The fourth type is the surrogate consent, which might be any of the above when given in special cases like parents or loco parentes of a child, close relatives of an unconscious or mentally handicapped patient. This type of consent is sometimes also called as proxy consent or substitute consent. For those who do not understand the research proposal or are incapable of making a voluntary decision are known as vulnerable group and a legally authorized representative is required to sign the informed consent on their behalf. Vulnerable groups might include children, prisoners and mentally handicapped people. In spite of all these guidelines, some over-enthusiastic investigators do not pay the desired attention towards their moral duties in research. Hence, standards and laws to govern research have been devised. Ethical review committees or institutional review boards are agencies that regulate research by examining the validity of a study proposal and the ethical considerations which are involved. Research on human subjects can inflict physical, emotional and social risks. The job of the Institutional Review Board is to minimize the risk and maximize the protection of these research subjects. Most hospitals and dental institutions have Institutional Review Boards. These usually comprise of 5 to 15 persons of diverse backgrounds who include clinicians, legal, social and at least one layperson. 
Also, it is now mandatory to register the research work with Clinical Trials Registry of India before starting any experimental studies involving human subjects in India. This registry was started in 2007 as a joint initiative of Indian Council of Medical Research, World Health Organization and Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. This is a free and online public record system that can be assessed by all as a step towards ensuring transparency in research. This registry also serves as the primary register of International Clinical Trials Registry Platform. For completion's sake, we should also look at the use of animal models in healthcare research besides humans. The Indian National Science Academy has formulated laboratory animal ethics guidelines for usage of these animal models for research purpose. To conclude, I would say that the international principles of research ethics are equally applicable for dental investigators as they are for any branch of healthcare. So, today we covered the importance of ethics in research for the growth of science in the field of dentistry. Next time we meet, we will be learning more about ethics in the field of dental care. Keep learning, keep growing. See you next time.